We'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the uh, Weber County Commission meeting held this day, the 17th day of December in 2019. We want to welcome you all here today. Especially, we want to welcome this group of school kids here. It's really nice to have you guys here and watch government operate. You know, it's interesting, when I was a kid, your age, uh, my dad was uh, on the city council. <clears throat> my uncle was uh, a county, uh, a state senator. <clears throat> and my other uncle was a county commissioner. Well, now I'm older. I've served as a, uh, county co or a, a city councilman. I've served as a state senator. And now I serve as a county commissioner. So I served all three of those positions. And at your age, sitting there, I'd have never thought that would have happened. So anyway, we want to welcome you here today, and hopefully we'll have a, little <coughs> have a little influence on what you think about government when you get done today. Anyway, with that, we would like to uh, uh, have an invocation today by Pastor Dave Malinak. And uh, this is his kids, his school that's here. And the thought of, or the uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be by Dustin Anthon. And I will give the thought of the day. So, Pastor Milnack, if you could step forward, please. Thank you. Let's pray. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have chosen to give the fullest expression of yourself in the Word of God incarnate, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he is the brightness of your glory and the express image of your person, and that the face that you've chosen to show the world is a face that's full of grace, full of kindness and compassion. We thank you, Lord, that as we celebrate this Christmas time, that we're reminded that he rules the world with truth and grace. And Lord, as we come to this commission meeting, we ask for our commissioners that you would guide them and help them. We pray that you would help them, that they would follow the example of our Lord, that they would govern us with truth and with grace. And Lord, that these kinds of things would characterize the government here. We pray also that we as citizens would support them in their role, that we would not simply oppose them for the sake of opposition, but that we would seek to work together in order to find solutions that will be helpful to us, that will enable us to pursue uh, those goals of liberty. We pray that you would help us also, that we would not just worry about how they're governing, but that we would govern ourselves that we would not expect them to do what we ourselves are not willing to do or expect them to live to a higher standard than we are willing to live. And Lord, we pray that we would not, as a result of this, lower the standard for them, but rather that we would raise the standard for ourselves. We ask that you'd help us to do these things, and we ask it for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Dustin, thank you, and Pastor Milnick, thank you. We appreciate it. It makes me uh, feel really good. I love to have a prayer at the beginning of our meetings. Uh, it makes me feel real good about that, and I thank you for that. So, uh, it's been one year. This is the completion of my first year as a county commissioner, and it'll also be the last uh, meeting that I will chair as the uh, chairman of this uh, commission. And so, uh, uh, I want to say thank you very much for the support that my fellow commissioners have given me.
Commissioner Harvey, Commissioner Forrest, it's been good dealing with you. And uh, this uh, chairmanship will go to Commissioner Forrest after this. And uh, one of the things that is so unique about our country is the transition of power and leadership. We transition and other countries don't. And that's what's so important about what we do here. We transition power and we do it in an orderly manner and we have faith in our, our government and the people who run it. And when we lose that, we lose the ability to govern ourselves. And so it is so important for us to transition power in an orderly fashion. And uh, we can't lose that. We can't lose sight of that. It's one of the most basic, fundamental parts of our republic. And uh, it's so important. And you kids need to understand that. Uh, when you look at other countries right now, uh, they have people who have been in there 30, 40 years, and they, they die in office, they won't give up uh, their position, and they uh, uh, repress the people, and that's just not the way to do it. That's not the way we set it up. So uh, this responsibility is given to us for a short period of time, and we run with it, and we do the best we can, and then we transition and give somebody else a chance to do the best they can. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good principle. And it's important that we, uh, uh, that we do that. Uh, and you know, that started way back with uh, George Washington. In fact, uh, the king, I think it was uh, King George, said, I can't believe that uh, he's not going to end up being the king over there because uh, he was so well respected, he could have been. But he understood the principle behind it. And uh, that's one thing, that's one thing I learned really importantly when I uh, became a senator, is that you have to have principles to run and do well. And it's very important that you don't let those principles go by. And so uh, that's my thought today. We all have principles, and uh, we live it the way we want to. So thank you very much. Good to be here today with you. So with that in mind, we have some presentations today. First one is uh, by the 4-H, Leslie Price. Good to have you here today. We welcome you. Oh, you know what? I, I skipped over public comment. Oh, no. Well, just sit right there in that chair for just a second. All right there. Good deal. Uh huh. Is there uh, <laughs> others who came to uh, address this body today? I skipped over public comment. We'd love to hear from you if you came f for the uh, purpose of wanting to address us. Now would be the time for you to step forward. See none? Okay. We'll go to Leslie at this point then. Thank you. I apologize for making you no. do that. No worries. No worries. Very good. All right, so my name is Leslie Price. I am currently a sophomore up at USU, um, but previously I was in 4-H for about seven years, going on two years without being in the 4-H program, and I'm pretty sad about it, um, but I'm about ready to tell you guys why. So when I first started 4-H, I was really shy. Um, I was kind of like the outsider, the outcast, and you couldn't really talk to me unless you had a cookie in your hand, you know? I was that kid, right? Um, but after about six months of being involved in the program, um, I got my first horse. And that's when my personality really started to come out. That's when people started calling me the natural leader. So that motivated my mom to bring me to this 4-H camp called TLT, um, Teen Leadership Training. It's a three-day camp that the state of Utah puts on for all the 4-H members across Utah. You know, like 200 kids are coming up to USU for three days and they're learning about leadership, public speaking, community service, you name it, we're learning about it. I did not want to go to this camp. Like I like, you know, theoretically put my foot down and I was not going to go to this camp at all, right? Um, and I remember going up to USU, like my mom's driving me and I'm looking out the passenger window, arms folded, avoiding eye contact, not wanting to go to this camp at all. Three days pass, I had the time of my life. It was fantastic. I then went to the same camp 
the following year later. And then I saw these kids my age, the people who were putting on the camp, wearing these green tailor jackets. And my poor extension educator, Allie, she's right back there, um, I told her at least 120 times that I was gonna wear one of those jackets. Well, with my dedication and her help and her guidance and all the help across the state of Utah, I was able to achieve my goal and become a Utah 4-H state ambassador and get a $10,000 scholarship to my dream college, USU. Um, okay, so when I was a state ambassador, one of the requirements that I had was I had to compete in a contest. And I had a pretty bad attitude about this, right? Like I was like, I'm just gonna wing public speaking, we'll see what happens, type of thing. And I went in there and I actually did a lot better than what I was expecting. I came out of that public speaking contest with first place. And then for the next six months, I then proceeded to practice for the national competition. But today I'm not telling you about my accomplishments to like brag or anything, but instead to tell you that because of 4-H, I was able to build up my confidence and achieve those things. So for me, the foundation of my leadership was horses, but for other people, 4-H offers photography, robotics, first aid, dogs, bunnies, chickens, livestock, like the possibilities are endless. And for me, it was horses, which caused me to learn about confidence and socialization and leadership and all this other fun stuff. Um, so basically, I'm just here today to tell you guys and to thank you personally for keeping the 4-H program active in Weber County. Because because of you guys and your continuous support and all of your encouragement, it has allowed people like me or kids like me who were shy at first to be able to make their best better. So thank you. Thank you, Leslie. We appreciate that. Hey. Yeah. Turn around, get back. <laughs> So how'd you Stop. do at the national competition? Um, I actually got champion overall. Did you? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's way good. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. pre congratulations and thank, thank you. you for coming and addressing us today. We yeah. appreciate that. Thank you for keeping 4-H going. You bet. Very good, commissioners. You, you either of you have any questions of her? Go ahead. Well, I don't know if there's any questions, but commissioner, you remember this during the legislative session. We were fortunate to have. On a couple of occasions, all the 4-H people, all the 4-H kids come down and visit with us and spend some time with us on the hill. And uh, I think we learned as much from them as they learned from us. But this is a great program. I've seen uh, a number of personal friends that have gone through 4-H. And whether it starts with horses or the whatever environment they start in, it's something that this... Uh, county needs which is good leadership and this is a, a way for kids like yourself students to to reach that next level that that i think would be hard to achieve without that so we pre uh, again congratulations i could see by your speaking ability that you've got uh, a long ways to go here so this is this is not your first rodeo <laughs> that's right not our first rodeo thanks commissioner very good. Well, we'll uh, now go to item G on our uh, agenda, which is the uh, consent items. <coughs> so our consent items today are, uh, first of all, the warrants, 2257 through 2280, and 4456-53 through 4458-75, in the amount of 964000 five hundred and six dollars so you kids that's a lot of money and we spend that every two weeks in the uh, in the county second item is a request for the purchase orders and these are the things that we're buying and uh, so we approve uh, for fiscal year 2019 the amount of two hundred and seventy nine thousand four hundred and thirty seven dollars <coughs> And we're close enough to fiscal year 20 that we now have uh, items in there as $208,928. Item three is request for approval of minutes <coughs> for December. Item four is a request for Weber County Assessor's Office for approval of surplus on chairs. Item five is a request for the Weber County Attorney's Office for surplus of office furniture and equipment. 
Item six is a request for the uh, Weber County Sheriff's Office for surplus guns. You know, we have all these sheriffs out here, they have guns, and believe it or not, them guns get old once in a while. I can't really believe it, but they do. And so we surplus them. Item seven is a Weber County Community Development Department for approval to declare parcel 01-047-0003 and 01-047-0006 as surplus property. So these are little strips of land that we get in on tax sale or uh, tax payments that uh, they don't want. Now, most of these pieces of property are maybe two feet wide by the length of the property or something like that. And since they don't have use of the property, they don't want to pay taxes on it. So we get the property back because we don't get tax payments. Now we will try to get rid of this property, but it's not easy to do. And we end up with these parcels all the time that we don't know quite what to do with. So anyway, item eight is a request for approval of ratification of an agreement by and between Weber County and Econo Waste regarding garbage collections. So uh, Econo Waste is an uh, individual is collecting garbage in the county and they did not win our current contract. So we're buying them out of the old contracts that they have with people in the tune of about $45,000. And that is the, uh, that is the uh, approval of that agreement. Item nine is Weber County uh, Tax Review Committee for approval of the following recommendations. Taggart Family Limited Liability Company, company parcel number 18-053-0005 to refund $2,562.67. And Smith Stone Supply, account number 115599, refund $2,117.14. Once in a while we have uh, our uh, the amount we uh, collect in taxes <coughs> gets off a little from the either property measurement or we accidentally overcharge them a little or so we have a tax review committee and that committee hears these and then they give the recommendations and in this case these are a couple of recommendations where we actually refund some money and we're not opposed to that people say you don't want to give the money back and it's like we want you to pay your taxes but we don't want you to pay more than your taxes so if we accidentally charge you extra we want to give it back to you and finally today, we have a request for a repro re approval of a retirement agreement by and between Weber County and Valerie Coulson, and finally Julie Comby. Uh, Julie Comby's been with the county since it was a county. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, this is kind of a sad day for us. We can't hardly believe that she's gonna retire. But her husband's got a chance to go to a new job in Idaho and she's decided she's actually gonna go with him. <laughs> and so we wish uh, both Valerie and Julie well in their retirement and this new phase of their life. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful day for them. And even though we'll miss them both, uh, it's, uh, it's just the way it happens as part of life, right? We all move on and do new things, and so we wish them a great deal of success in that. We transition. We transition. So, commissioners, those are our consent items. Do you have any uh, comments, either of you? No, I think they look good. I've been through the... I have a question. Yes. Purchase orders. In our meeting this morning, when we meet with the division and department heads, uh, we're working on contracts uh, for copy machines. Uh, for the entire county, so we buy them as a package instead of departmentally, right. which can save us uh, per machine uh, thousands of dollars per county. Can be 
tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. I understand that there is, and I looked through the warrants, uh, Lynn, and I looked through the uh, purchase orders. I can't find uh, where it, w it was, it came to, it was whispered, not whispered, but it was suggested that there was a, a copy machine, a new contract on the warrants. I have not been able to find that. Uh, for the sheriff's office, not that we're against the sheriff's office getting a copy machine, but we want to make sure that uh, we're not signing any new contracts until we... No, this is just so our copy machine right now is 13 years old and it's no longer functioning. It's for our administrative area. So this was something that was suggested through Ricky Hatch um, for us to go and purchase this machine because we, we do not have a copy or print machine right now in our before that one item, before we do that, I'd like you to speak with uh, Quinn Fowers in our IT department. He was aware of the purchase. Yeah, so, so we've... Are you? That's, that's what we talked about this morning. We it's, been, it's been done. Yeah, it was pulled off. Oh, okay. So off. okay. Right. right. Yeah. Great. Go to the new vendor. Okay. That's been taken care of. <laughs> Thank you. Then I'm, I'll make a motion if you're aware, ready, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we're going to go to Lynn, Lynn and him explain. So Lynn, why don't you go ahead and talk about these? Thank you, Commissioner. The major expenses uh, for the warrants, we had 248 checks totaling almost 965,000. The largest of these, 48% or 458,000, went to the transfer station for disposal fees. 8% or 80,000 to the library for books and materials, cameras at the Ogden Valley Branch and utilities. 6% or 54,000 for employee dental insurance and 5% or 48,000 to the USU extension for our third quarter contribution. For purchase orders, 2019, we had 30, or covering the 2019 year, the session 35 POs for a total of 279,000, largest of these 62% or 172,000 to the jail for ammunition and carpeting. 20% or 56,000 of the conference center for food and labor and elevator repairs. And then two more expenditures each, 7% or 18,000, one to IT for firewall software and hardware, and the library for software renewal and <coughs> boiler repairs. And finally, looking ahead into 2020, we've had five purchase orders approved, totaling 209,000. Uh, the overwhelming majority of that, 96% or 200,000 uh, to the fleet for plow truck. So there's two items of note there. First of all, uh, how many of you kids have a garbage can at your house? Yeah, well, I've got one too. Well, you always say to yourself, so when that guy comes in that garbage truck and picks that up, where do they take that garbage? Where does it go? Well, it goes out here to a building we call a transfer station, and then they put that garbage in a couple of great big trucks and haul it out to a landfill. Well, we're just about ready to, to approve a bill for $458,000 for uh, garbage for one month for the county. So that's a half a million dollars every month that we pay to get rid of our garbage out of this county. So that's a lot of money. Second thing on here that I think is something important to note <coughs> is uh, on this is a new a new snowplow and truck. That new truck and snowplow is within a few dollars, well it's actually a few dollars over $200,000. Yeah. So that's a ton of money to get a truck, big old dump truck with a bed on it and then fit it with a plow. You know these plows that we fit on there that truck was about $110,000, uh, uh, but the snowplow, the snowplow was 90000 and uh, that's a pretty technical piece of equipment right now. Uh, it's and it's amazing, and uh, they're, they're huge. These are big trucks, and uh, you know, uh, we take those trucks up on top of Powder Mountain and plow the road up there with these big augers and snowblowers and it's pretty complicated what we do. The county, it's an amazing organization and it's amazing to watch the things we do in it. So those are the two items of note that I wanted to uh, make note of here, is uh, it's not cheap to run this county and that's just in garbage and snow plowing, let alone all the other things we do. 
few other things, yeah. Yeah. So I'm ready for a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion that we approve the consent items as listed on today's agenda, G, 1 through and including 10. I'll second that. Very good. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, next item uh, is under action items is item H1, which is a request for approval of a sponsorship contract buying between Weber County and the county seat for promotional services. So, this must not be that exciting. Yeah, see you kids. See you now. Shelly, go ahead. Good morning, commissioners. We have a sponsorship agreement with um, Chadwick Booth and Company for the 10th season of the county seat. It's a small uh, sponsorship for promotional services. And with that, I request your approval on this contract. So commissioners, if you remember, they request about a $10,000 deal. More. And uh, yeah, more. And we give them 1500 this year. And that's just, you know, he wasn't very happy. I talked with him personally, and I don't doubt both of you did down at UAC. Mm -hmm. And basically, I just told him that's all he gets. I told him we don't want to be on TV, and we didn't. Want, we didn't want. We do want to keep him alive, but barely. <laughs> he, he provides a great service for uh, counties in general, the 29 counties that are around the state, and about different county issues. Uh, many of those aren't necessarily related to our urban things, but it's really valuable for rural, and it'll be good for. I think I can support this. Fisher, for. I would uh, also agree, and I think this is a fair uh, contribution. This the county seat does a does a great job on their TV show, but at the same time, we need to be cognizant of the fact these are taxpayer dollars, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of what's on that uh, doesn't impact our county directly, in, even though it could be indirect. And with that, Mr. Chair, are you ready for a motion? I am, Mr. Chair. I'd move to approve the. Sponsorship contract buying between Weber County and the county seat for promotional services. Second. Very good. I have motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So item two is a request for a approval of a resolution uh, between Weber County appointing members of the West Weber Park District Board of Trustees. Mrs. Stacy Ski. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. I received notice to um, post for the Western Weber Park District. Um, an area had de-annexed out of this park district, which two of their members were no longer um, able to serve. <clears throat> and then um, Kerry Gibson was a former member and then he resigned. So his position expired the 2021 and the other two expired, or sorry, his position, yeah, expired 2021 and the other two were going to expire at the end of this year. So I posted for the three positions and I received three applications that you have before you for appointment. Um, <clears throat> it's up to you three who you want to put in that um, position to fulfill the remainder of Carrie Gibson's seat, which would expire 2021. <clears throat> oh, I don't quite understand this. On our agenda here, I show three vacancies there, mm -hmm. and we have three applications. applications. Right. Them. Okay. I didn't quite get that out of your explanation. So we could literally just put all three in. Yeah, but you just have to determine which person you want to 21. expire in 21, and then the other two to expire in 2020. Okay, so basically we have Katie Toon, Bren Edwards, and uh, I skipped one here. Heslip. Roger Heslip. Roger Heslip. Roger Heslip. Very good. Commissioners, what's your pleasure here? Do either of you have an opinion? They're all great. I appreciate uh, them willing to serve. And, and uh, I don't have a, I just assume draw, to be fair, uh, on, on that. I asked about that and it wasn't. They just said it's it's not a legal only, requirement, yeah. but you are you're welcome to do that if you'd like. Just make a motion. 
Ok. Well, I don't know that that's fair because I don't know one of the applicants. I know two of them. Well, then put those two in the 23 and the other one in the 21. Well, that wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't be fair, though. Oh, my gosh. Listen, you've done a I've, wonderful job teaching, teaching today. Yeah, let's be, I'm ready to move on with it. Good. Okay, fine. Okay, Commissioner Four, go ahead. So I'm going to. Uh, I know. That's good. <laughs> and and to be uh, honest, I don't know any of these three, so I'm not being prejudiced here. So I'm just going to take it. In. Well, they're wonderful people. You should yeah. meet them. I would you? I know Roger yeah. very well. Would you? Yeah, well, Roger, I probably <laughs> met him before. Yeah, okay. would, would you please set up that meeting for me? <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, until we, I change my mind, I'm going to motion to approve the three individuals listed. Uh, attach Katie Toon, Roger Heslip, and Bryn, Bryn Edwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to recommend that uh, Bryn Edwards be appointed to the December 31st, 2021. The other two obviously would be December 31st, 2023, serving with uh, Kathy Vernu and... Dwayne Hanson, and mm -hmm. hopefully this will uh, get some additional people on this, and they can locate a site out there because I know this park is as as on a number of people's mind, and it would be uh, a great addition to the Weber County area. So that's my motion, Mr. Very good. Chair. We have a motion. I'll second that. We have a second too. You know, it's interesting. I've got a daughter who lives out there, and I've been trying to get her to put her application. <laughs> she needs to do that. She won't do it. <laughs> That's that's resolution uh, 65, I believe. Right. Yeah. Resolution 65, Mr. Chair. Very good. So we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, Fatima. Commissioner Harvey. Aye. Commissioner Frohr. Aye. Chair Jenkins. Aye. Thank you very much. All right. Next item up is uh, approval of resolution by and between Weber County and the Roy Water Conservancy District, approving uh, new members of that district. Stacy, go ahead. So I received <clears throat> notice to post for the Roy Water Conservancy District. Two of their members um, currently serving, Darrell Field and Chad Zitto. Um, Chad serves in District 3 of this district, and Darrell is in District 4. Um, I posted for, this <clears throat> for these vacancies and received their two applications. So I believe they're both here, and they're just seeking reappointment. Reappointments. Thank you. Are you gentle, two gentlemen here? Could you stand up? Well, yeah, stand up so we know who you are. We can see you. It's Chad. Chad. There's Darrell. Very good. Thank you for coming here today to view these appointments. Uh, we appreciate your time, the fact that you've chose to serve and help your community. And Commissioners, you got any questions, either of you? No, I appreciate their willingness to serve. Very good. Commissioner Harvey, I'm going to go to you one more time. I'm going to try the second time. No, it's, not, it's, it's <laughs> usually the third time's a charm. Let's try the second time. I'll uh, make a motion that we approve the names Darrell Field and Chad Zito for the Roy Water Conservancy District. That'd be resolution number 66. Very good. I have a motion. I'll second that. And a second. Fatima. Commissioner Harvey. Aye. Commissioner Flora. Aye. Chair Jenkins. Now I've seen them, all vote aye. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. <clears throat> very good. Uh, we'll now go to item four. <clears throat> Approval of an amendment to the Tourism Convention uh, Event Sales Marketing Management Agreement. Mr. Christopher Crockett. Thank you, Commissioners. The, yes. count, the county has a four-year agreement with the Ogden Weber Convention Visitors Bureau. As part of that agreement, uh, they are required to present a marketing plan, which happened, it was either the last commission or the one before that Sarah Tolliver presented. Um, and that should be, uh, an amendment needs to be made to the agreement to incorporate that marketing plan. And then uh, any adjustments in compensation as part of the contract also needs to be done by amendment. And so as part of the 2020 approved budget, um, there is a, an amendment to this agreement uh, to increase the compensation for 2020 to $1,050,000. And so we're presenting this to you for consideration and a request for approval. 
So that one million fifty thousand dollars that represents seventy percent, doesn't it? Do you know that? I don't know the specific percentage. Of seventy percent of the TRT, TRCC. TRT. I don't think it's quite seventy percent, but a number closer to sixty-two or sixty-three or sixty-four, right in there, is what I'm remembering. But I, uh, that's just off of memory. You think this was the amount we agreed to? That's the amount I think we were. This is the amount project. I confirmed with Scott Park. Did you? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I believe uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, that was the amount. Uh, Chris, okay. could you tell us what the increase was? I think that's important. From, uh, from the previous year. I know this was an increase. I just can't remember what we increased. Yes, uh, it might take me a moment to pull up the last year's agreement, but it wasn't a, a significant amount. Yeah, and my recollection is we didn't go to the 70%. We ended up going with like 68. I think uh, Commissioner Harvey's right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I needed a number that's in the 60s without going over. The uh, amount for 2019 was $1,033,718. So it's not, it wasn't a, it wasn't a huge increase. Right. Yeah. Or they do a wonderful job over there. They're Yeah, fantastic. Commissioner Harvey and I uh, sit on that board and we were over there yesterday to their meeting and uh, I have to agree, they do an excellent job. And uh, there were two things we brought up this last year that they did for us that were absolutely wonderful. One of them was the uh, the, hats, uh, the sesquicentennial. Yeah, the sesquicentennial. And the handling of the hats. Oh, and yeah, the other one was those hats we bought and turned over to her. Yeah. Uh, it turned out that those things weren't doing too good, and uh, she actually kind of saved the day there between it all. Uh, We're I'm not sure we got all our money back, but we got a major share of it. Well, and, it's and uh, that turned out to be really good. May I? Yes. So those, it's just for this body to know, we know those hats uh, have gone into 33 other countries. Right. They have Weber County inside them. They show the sesquicentennial, the 150th anniversary, plus the hats that were purchased at the Heritage uh, Festival itself. So we know of at least 33 countries that they're in. So it's, yeah. it's a great way to promote Weber County out all over the world again. And, as this was a worldwide event 150 years ago. So she did a wonderful job. She's, uh, we're lucky to have her representing our community and the team, the whole team. So I've got no problem with this. And if you're ready for a motion. I am. I'll make the motion that we, uh, re we approve the amendment of the Tourism and Convention uh, Bureau for the Event Sales and Marketing Management as listed and presented by Mr. Crockett. Very good. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Next is a approval uh, to add a possible community block grant project to the Weber County Capital Improvement Fund <clears throat> for 20 through 25. Good morning, Commissioners. Yeah, look, what Chad I have before Meyer you is an, an approval to add a possible community development block grant program to Weber County's uh, capital improvement pl uh, plan for uh, 2020 through 2025. As you remember, last week we had Andy here with the Weber Housing Authority, um, and she was a you know she had a representative of the How to Apply meeting, and she does have a project that they're looking at doing, um, purchasing a single family home or a, mm. or a residential home and rehabbing it so they can either rent it to a, to an LMI family or to sell it to an LMI family. And so <coughs> as part of this project, or as part of this process, the county has to put that project onto our CIP um, uh, for her to continue to with the application of that process. So that's what I have before you, and hopefully I can answer any questions that you might have in addition to that. Commissioners, any questions? No. No, and uh, I just want to make a comment on this. Please, uh, Commissioner So if you look at Weber Housing's financial uh, in comparison to other counties in this state, we have a little under 300 vouchers and comparison to Davis County that has 12,000. Uh, keep in mind that the major source of income for housing authority is a nonprofit. This is not a county agency. The major source of revenue for housing is the vouchers. The other source that the counties use, <coughs> Davis, Salt Lake especially, uh, is rental housing. 
they use, they rehab properties, and then they use the income from those properties to run their programs. And so this is something that we need to take a, a serious look at so that we can make the housing authority a little more financially stable uh, in the future. So I think this is a step in the right direction. I don't believe it's, right. I don't think it's right to use taxpayer dollars in some cases for a nonprofit, but the, uh, the housing authority does a great job. And as we know with the homeless situation across this county, the need for housing is gonna continue to increase, especially <laughs> affordable housing. So, well, Commissioner, where do they come up with 12,000 vouchers? Do you know? That's a good question. I asked that uh, Scott Park to do a little more investigation, but uh, that's a lot of vouchers in comparison to what we have now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and part of that issue was created when, you'll remember this, when Weber County split from Ogden City at one time uh, a number of years ago. We were, we, were, we were part of the Ogden Housing Authority when Weber County decided to, to start their own venture. So we, you know, we're a fairly new uh, housing authority in comparison to some of these others, but it, it takes it time. The other Cogdens was only uh, 11 or 1,200. They have about 1,200, I believe. Or, yeah. yeah. So I don't know how Davis received 12,000, but it's a significant. We ought to have Andy look into that. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be discussing that at our next board. All right. Meeting. But well, anyway. Do you have any questions for Chad, either of you? No. I don't. I, I don't for I'd uh, move to approve. Uh, the where we have possible community uh, block grant for Weber County's capital improvements, which would go to the Weber Housing. Second. Very good. I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's Thanks, approved. Thank you. Next item is a request for approval for a final reading of an ordinance between the Weber County Commission and the Weber County Fee Ordinance. Or oh, amending the Weber County fee ordinance. I'm sorry. Mr. Philip Reese. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Lieutenant Reese couldn't make it today. My name is Dustin Athen. I'll be uh, substituting for him. Oh, I apologize. That's okay. Are there any questions I can answer uh, prior to the final reading of this ordinance? Well, I don't have any. Do either of you other two? It's an increase in it, right? Correct. To what? <clears throat> okay. So, depending on the program, specifically, <coughs> uh, data reporting program will be increasing to excuse me, $105 per month uh, compared to the existing yeah. rate of $75. Work search program will be increasing to $40 per week. <coughs> uh, work release program will be increasing to $20 per day versus the existing rate of $12.50 per day. And we had a we had a presentation on this a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Any questions? No. I have none. Thank you. Uh, what about a motion? I'll make the motion. We approve the final reading of this ordinance, which is ordinance number twenty-five regarding fees uh, in the Weber County uh, Sheriff's Office. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Fatima. Commissioner Harvey. Aye. Commissioner Flora. Aye. Chair Jenkins. Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Next is a request for approval of, uh, of ratification of certified assurance and grant conditions for award of a VOCA grant. Charlotte Sutherland. Good morning, Commission. Good morning. morning. How are you guys today? Well, Good. just peachy. Good. So great news is that we were awarded a two-year award for our VOCA grant, <clears throat> which is the Vic Victims Assistant Fund um, through the state of Utah and some federal grants. With that, which we have been awarded before, um, they just updated some of our certified assurances and grant conditions. We did have the attorney's office look over these. Um, we have to amend one of our... Um, just one of our current policies just to make sure that we fall exactly in line what they with what they're saying which is in process right now but other than that i think we're looking really good do you guys have any questions for me on this questions commissioners no not me no. okay very good i'd stand for a motion then mr chair i'd move to approve the ratification of certified assurances and grant conditions for award of the voca grant for the sheriff's department second a motion a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you Commissioner. Charlotte. 
So item eight is request for approval of a co-op agreement buying between Weber County and the Utah State Parks for search and rescue operations, storage of search and rescue equipment. Mr. Mark Horton. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Good, how are you? Right. Just happy to be here. Good. So this is an agreement that we have with State Parks. They own 10 acres up on top of Monty at mile marker 36. They have a building there where they run their grooming operations out of. And the, we just renew this contract every five years. But what they do is give search and rescue access to that building for our search and rescue activities in the winter. We have a small command center in there, and then we're also able to snow, store a snowcat and two snowmobiles for rescue operations. And so it's just a renewal of that contract. Do you guys have any questions about any it? Any questions, commissioners? Don't see any. Thank you very much. I stand for a motion then. I'll make a motion, yes. Mr. Chair, that we approve the uh, the request between Weber County and the State Park, Utah State Parks, for the search and rescue operations. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Mark. Next is a request for approval of a memorandum of understanding by between Weber County and Merritt Slaterville for the use of city vehicles for law enforcement volunteers. This is the VIPS program. Terrence Lavely? Yes, sir. Glad to meet you. How are you, Commissioner? Good. Good Time's yours. So this is a MOU similar to what Huntsville entered into back in end of July, first part of August, to utilize a vehicle for the volunteer program. Mary Slater will purchase a truck and It'll be used for city uses during the day, but then evenings, weekends, and holidays, it'll be available to the volunteers to access to be able to uh, patrol through the city as members of that volunteer program. Questions, commissioners? No, nope. I like this program. I do too, seems to be doing well. So, so far we're, give you a little bit, we're at 37 volunteers and they've, since August 1st, have donated 758 hours of time wow. as of this weekend. And we've That's had fantastic. our trucks That's been out fantastic. every weekend, and Huntsville's trucks been out almost every weekend. So they are right. out and they are, are active. Are you finding that that extra set of eyes is helpful? Yes, we are. We've had several incidents where they've assisted uh, our patrol deputies on accident scenes. One critical, critical incident that took our volunteers gave nine hours. They shut down a roadway. Um, for a major incident that would have required a deputy to sit on that. So that deputy was able to be out patrolling, answering calls for service while they handled that traffic control incident. Plus, we probably can't quantify the number of things we've been able to curtail just by the presence of them driving by. There's no way to say that. Although I have had several of the volunteers say they are shocked at how much uh, driving through their neighborhoods or parking near an intersection, they've noticed a decrease in speed or running stop signs and so those things that they've noticed in their own neighborhoods traffic violation wise just having that truck there even though they can't make a traffic stop and issue a citation it's curtailed some of that activity yeah great good how about a motion mr chair i would uh, move to approve the memorandum of understanding uh, buying between Weber County and Marriott Slaterville for use of city vehicles for the law enforcement volunteers, the VIPS program. And let me say that this is another uh, great program started by the sheriff. And it's an uh, opportunity for our volunteers that want to volunteer in this county to go out and really make a difference. And I'm glad to see that the sheriff and his department is taking advantage of that for the public benefit. It's a great program. It is. I'll second that motion. Very good. We have a motion and second. I just want to make a comment. This is kind of like a uh, apprentice program a little bit, and uh, gives the, uh, some of these kids a chance to try it before they actually decide if they want to make it a career. And uh, I think it's really good. So congratulations on that. Thank you, sir. All in favor say aye. 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 It's approved. Thank you very much, Terrence. Uh, request for approval, item 10 an indigent defense agreement by and between Weber County on the following Francisco Romain and Randall Marshall commissioners uh, Brian Barron uh, not here today is so currently Chris, drafting, you're handle that yes he's currently drafting some very time-sensitive okay. contracts so, that's okay go ahead um, 
Before you is a request for two amendments to existing contracts for indigent defense representation. Last month, the County Commission approved a contract for a specialty attorney with Randall Marshall, who would be handling an unlawful uh, pa uh, pattern, uh, pattern of unlawful activity case, and then also future cases that would require a high uh, degree of specialty in particular areas of law. As such, we needed to make a modification to his existing contract where he would give up one of his law and motion calendars, uh, and that would go to Francisco Roman. So there's just a switch uh, in their assignments. Very good. Any questions? I can speak to this just to briefly in Garrett, as much as ahead. I worked with Brian on this. Uh, he does a lot of detail work to make sure that the representation is qualified, but also efficient, uh, not just for the defense of the indigent, but also for Weber County. I love the balance that Mr. Barron puts into this, and it's with full confidence that I'd be happy to make a, a motion that we approve this one ready for. You win, yeah, I'm you ready. And then I'll make that motion that we approve those addendums for indigent defense for Francisco Roman and Randall Marshall. Second. Very good. I have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that passes. Finally, item 11, request for approval of a contract binding between Weaver County and AAA Fire and Alarm for the development of a sprinkling system for the Archer Building. Mr. Todd Fiario. Gentlemen, how are you? Good. So what you have in front of you is a contract that went to bid, um, and they actually were the low bid, which we don't always take, but they met all of um, our criteria. I also want to add that um, as a county, a lot of times on projects like this, we ask them to bring a contract to us because they are very specific to the work they are doing. And that goes to our attorneys. Mr. Crockett handled this one. And I have to say that if we did not have that process in place, this was quite an interesting contract. And asking us to cover all their people on site with our own insurance and things that we do not do. So um, very straightforward. That is for the new archery complex. So this will be done sometime about February. Uh, they will work with our contractor. And again, thanks to Chris and his team because uh, that needed more than a couple little cross outs on this contract. So. Well, Todd, I thought we decided they didn't need to sprinkle that building. We do. Anything over 12,500 square feet. And we went every which way but sideways trying to figure out how not to do that. Well, you looked me in the, the eye and personally told me you had figured out a way around it. We thought we did. We had changed the building type, but at the end of the day, we did not have to sprinkle it if we did that. But that would require each hydrant in that area to have 3,000 gallons per minute, which was more than the water requirement and not accessible. So... That would have had us go under 24th to get to the 24 inch main on the north side of 24th Street. So this contract is about a third of the cost of us trying to get to that water. And it allows us with the just over 1100 GPM per minute to satisfy both the sprinkler system. When you have the sprinkler system in the building, then your requirement for the hydrants outside the building is lessened. So. That dance went on for about two months of us with engineering and planning, trying to figure out how to best approach this. And this was substantially less expensive. So, so how are you going to heat that building? Have you decided? Yes, there will be between four and five unit heaters that will handle the archery part of the building. Uh, the office piece that will actually be a standard, I don't remember the tonnage, it's a heater HVAC unit that will handle the classroom, the offices and the lobby area. And those are all in the bid um, that we've already accepted. This would be just for this for my. This will be a pressurized system, it's probably similar to like we have at the riding arena. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty basic system. Um, it's basically a warehouse for about seventy percent of that structure. There are some drops that go into the classroom and offices, but pretty straightforward six-inch line that comes into the building that's flanged, and they go from there. The only thing that bothers me about this is this is going to be required to keep that at temperature all the time now. Correct. And uh, my hope was that uh, by not having fire sprinkler, you could take the temperature down the times you weren't using it. Correct. And at night, then we just, first off, it's in the ceiling, which is your warmest part, but then you just have to maintain above freezing, so it's not like we have to have 68 degrees in there. Hold on. 
<clears throat> my experience. Let's Hold on, I, what? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> my experience with the riding arena is that's that's that is and it's not correct. You have to heat the portion where the fire riser or where the riser of the sprinkler system comes in, but the rest of the system is filled with a uh, something else. And then if a fire happens or those bulbs, the heat then has those bulbs expand, that activates the fire system. And then you're pushing it through. So you don't have to heat the whole uh, big area of the archery center, only the office piece of it. So. That's how we do it out at the riding arena. Yeah, but that's different. This yeah. is not how this will be. This is a wet system. So if that's you, right. And I will say, like, they over the ice rink is there. a dry system, yeah. which is compressed air to keep it out of there. But to keep <clears> this <throat> above freezing in that area, in that location, is not a lot with those heaters. And uh, you, would, you would have to have an air compressor and a different type of system to do a dry system over that area. Um, so yeah, we will keep it above freezing and, and I don't think that will be an issue. That building will be used um, all winter long as well. So trying to get a building to go from freezing to a usable temperature every day is actually harder than to maintain a temperature in there. Um, we'll, it will just automatically lower when we're closed and then in the morning it will come back up to temp. So, All right. Commissioners, any other questions? Is there a, did you bid a dry system? No. When we did some exploratory prior to doing this and had a couple companies come back to give us an idea what this would cost when we were trying to decide which was the least expensive way to go. Um, the dry system is substantially more. Substantially. Yeah. And so, it's also more on ongoing cost, but then so is heating. Yep. Yeah, but I'm telling you, dry systems are a pain because you got to... This little uh, compressor you're talking about is sitting in the back room. It's I, going all the time. Yeah. I, so uh, all the time you're in there, you can hear this. Brrr, mm -hmm. It's like, what's that? What's that? Oh, it's that dumb compressor. And you do an back. excellent impression of a compressor. <laughs> <laughs> when when, when you transition like, out of commissioner, you could be a <laughs> compressor. A compressor. Uh, <laughs> 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 Don't go there, Commissioner Harvey. Yeah, just <laughs> we can hear you loudly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve this contract between Weber County and AAA Fire Safety for the archery building. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank it's you, gentlemen. approved. Todd. Thank you, Todd. Very good. We have uh, our... Uh, Stall of Fame to uh, uh, award this morning. Mr. Uh, Sean Wilkinson, do you want to come up and talk about this? You and Bill, who do you want to give it to today? <laughs> it's okay to walk come. quickly. Boy, look at them walk and run down there. Oh, they yeah. Walk. They walk We're quickly. Excited. Yeah. Look, Commission to move quickly. Commissioners, this morning we would like to give the Stall of Fame award to Rana Tidwell. Oh, yeah. there you go. And let, let me tell you just a little bit about Rana. Uh, first, it's an honor to be able to recognize her this morning. Uh, Rana doesn't get to see a lot of people because she's over in our office, which is kind of separated from the Weber Center. But if you ask anybody in the Weber Center, they know who Rana is. Um, and they know that because Rana's customer service is beyond compare. Uh, she, she knows her job very well and uh, people come to her to find out how to do things and she is always willing uh, to help them and to put together uh, trainings or summaries that, that help people get their jobs done. She, she takes whatever time is necessary to make sure that she is helping other people. And uh, it, it's amazing. So not only is she good at customer service, she is the best organizer I have ever seen. And that's saying something because if you look at my office, everything has a place, but <laughs> Rana is amazing. Rana is also a party planner extraordinaire. And she takes time to make sure that everyone's birthday is recognized and that when holidays come around or it's just time to get the group together for some, uh, for some fun, she is the one that puts that together and makes it a priority. <coughs> and that is very helpful. 
uh, for the operations and property management division. They'll tell you that. And, and I, I want to thank her for doing that. She leads by example. She also recognizes the importance of family time. And it was fun to watch her this last football season come in her Fremont blue uh, when her son was, was playing and she made sure she took off time to attend those games. So <coughs> that's what I have to say and I'll, I'll let Bill say a few things and then let Rana talk. Yeah, we could go on for hours. Uh, so uh, Rana's influence is, she is kind of a county minded woman. Uh, there's not a department that is an influence for her. Uh, her influence goes far beyond the front counter over there in our office. Um, you've noticed uh, a few extra decorations and things in the Weber Center. You'll see some more coming correctly, Rana. She's been proactive, uh, you know, getting out of our office and affecting the lives of everybody else. You'll see some more decorations show up in the atrium area and things that she's proactively working on through this holiday season, and we appreciate her. Uh, she recognizes people. Uh, there's the ones that everybody has good and bad days, but she recognizes individuals in our office uh, and it just, it's not just operations, it's property management. She goes out of her way to do something special for every person on their birthday. Uh, any recognition thing that shows up on your Google calendar, she's recognizing and doing stuff for people. That's, that's what kind of person she is. Uh, not a self-serving per person, but a servant leadership. She does it, models that by example. So we appreciate you, Rana. So, Rana, we're going to come down there and give you an award. Is there anything you want to say in the meantime? Thank you, everyone. I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> well, this is a heavy-duty award. First of all, you get a special parking stall for a whole month. <laughs> it might not be good for you because it's further away from yeah. your office, but... Oh, is it? Good. That's all right. That's true. Okay, the second thing you get is you get this uh, fancy key ring to put your keys on. It's got a star on it that says Weaver County. And I'm telling you, this is, this is, I think they're minted. I think there's, they're numbered. There's only, well, I can't, I just, uh, the pressure of the moment's got me. Well, I can't find that, that number on there, but it's on there somewhere. Limited yeah, limited edition. There's only a few of these ever given out. You, you're going to get one of them today. So we want to welcome you. So let's, uh, let's come down here and give this to her. And, Uh, Alicia yeah. <laughs> always have good parking regardless of how far it is from your office. Okay, let me show us giving our that. <laughs> hey, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah, well You know, it takes a team to manage these organizations, and uh, uh, Ronnie, you're a big part of this team, and uh, it's exciting for us to see you recognize. I know uh, it's these little things that uh, guys like us blow over, but it's the things that end up making your office a special place to work and a comfortable place to come. and. Uh, so it's, it's greatly appreciated, not only of yourself, but all the others in the, our offices that do these very things. You know, when we walk in, we have a Christmas tree in ours, and we have a, what's that little elf guy that goes around all over the place? Anyway, we find my shelves and things. and Anyway, that kind of stuff uh, ends up really uh, making it special. Uh, after a while, so we appreciate, appreciate all who do that. It's very good of you. So, Commissioner comments. Commissioners, anything you want to say? Well, I don't think I can pass this opportunity up. Good. So, you know, time flies when you're having fun. I think you probably knew that. And this last, this year's gone by pretty fast. Yeah. Um, well, that's true. Wow. 
it's uh, yeah this is my first year as well uh, completion of it and I just want to uh, express uh, my gratitude and thanks first off to all the great employees we have uh, in this county I continue to be amazed at the we talked about customer service which I think is the most important thing that we offer the public is that customer service when they come to us for whatever needs they may have from the county and without this team that we have in Weber County to provide that customer service we couldn't do our job we'd uh, be less effective the public would view us in a different light so uh, I'm just very uh, blessed to be around such great people I wanted wanted you folks and the people out there that work for the county to know that without them without you and your personal uh, customer service you give the county we couldn't do our job second I want to give uh, thanks and express my gratitude for Commissioner Jenkins for the chair we've worked a number of years together I've yeah. always appreciated his <laughs> his leadership uh, and this year especially where we've had some difficult issues to deal with um, he you have been able to make sure that we stay together as a team which is very important uh, I think it's made us more effective I think it's made uh, the trust that the public has in government uh, at an all-time high for Weber County and I, I don't say that lightly I think that they see that we're working together as a team and you deserve a uh, majority of the credit for making that happen Commissioner Harvey uh, had a little time in the last couple weeks to spend some personal time with you yeah. been very been very uh, appreciative of your efforts not only with the county but uh, your entire career here in Weber County and uh, I want you to know that again you make this county a better place for a number of people including myself so thank you and uh, we probably won't uh, see a lot of each other the next couple weeks but uh, we still have some issues to finish up and and look forward to an exciting new year 2020 we're not uh, we're not going to lighten the load as we know what's coming down uh, we take a small break and then be back at it but uh, just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and again thank you for a, what I consider to be a very successful 2019 thank you very much I appreciate that Commissioner for Commissioner Harvey look <laughs> uh, to be in the room with the former legislator and a former senator Holy mackerel. The ballots and to hear them jab back and forth one to another, it's actually really, really fun. Um, the one thing that I've learned from both of you is respect for one another and re respect for our team. I've never enjoyed a work experience more in my life uh, than I have in this last, this last bit. It's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, while I have appreciated very much, Gage, that uh, time down at our leadership conference was great. I appreciate your leadership as the chair. Scott, st uh, or commissioner. Um, you know, Scott, or sorry, Commissioner Jenkins, is uh, he's a real man there's a piece to him behind the scenes that is rarely seen but to me he's made a great impact he's a good leader he's a good mentor and I'm looking forward to learning from you, Commissioner Frohr. It's amazing to me how you've helped move the county forward because of your expertise and what you've done in the past. It's to sit and learn at really uh, with, with you two has just been wonderful for me. <clears throat> to transition, Bryce, you and your team coming here to support Rana is great 
You're a good leader, Bryce. You've done a great, you've done great things for us. The building has never felt better in the 25 years I can remember. It feels just great here. Not just because of the holiday, but because of all the people, like Commissioner Frohr was saying. It's never felt better. I've noticed that in the last few weeks. Just the feeling coming in is great. The changes that are made both on-site and all the people who work off-site, or not necessarily in this building, but at places they work all day, every day outside this building. Sylvia, you're here a lot. This is the best time ever. Even with our partners with cities and everything else, which we're really lucky. I, in my lifetime, which is only uh, 55, 60 years, well, 57 years and a half, <laughs> which is substantially less than either one of these two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know that Ogden is progressing at a faster pace since the railroad. We've certainly changed that pendulum swing to go in a positive direction now. It's, there's a feeling in the air, whether we talk about economic development or tourism or budgets or anything. Um, you know, Commissioner Jenkins just talked about a, the garbage and how much we were spending as he was educating the kids that were sitting out there and you know I don't know if you understand but for unincorporated Weber County that means about twenty dollars a month less expensive uh, and that extra savings more than will offset any tax that's a huge deal and so I really appreciate the curbside service that all of us enjoy, especially here. So that's a big deal. Sean, Bill, you and your teams, everybody in this room I could name. You guys are doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Uh, Merry Christmas. And I use Merry Christmas. Not just Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas to, to all of you. And then uh, we'll have a great new year. You bet. Thank you, commissioners, both of you. It's been my pleasure to work with you. You know, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate what you've both said today. I've pushed pretty hard this year. I admit it. We've, uh, we haven't looked back. We've moved forward and we have pushed hard. And I've set you up for lots of meetings. And I got to admit, I expected more pushback <laughs> than I got from you. You two really come along well with me, and you supported me, and I hope to give uh, you, Commissioner, for next year the same kind of respect you gave me uh, uh, as we pushed. And uh, nobody got really mad at me, and uh, we pushed really pretty hard through all this. And the only one I had to apologize in the whole thing was Sean. <laughs> uh, I got a little intense last week in our garbage uh, negotiations. But anyway, other than that, it's been a good year. And uh, I am really proud uh, and pleased to be a county commissioner. I've never had as much fun as I'm having right now. My wife says every day I get up and go to work, my smile's big. And, it's a lot of fun, so I do enjoy working. <clears throat> I enjoy the gals in the office, Shelly and Stacy and Christy. You guys do a great job, and you treat us good and with respect, and we love coming in and working shoulder to shoulder with you. You're a lot of fun. So with that, I think it's time to uh, end our meeting. Move for adjournment. Second. All in favor say aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all.